Hi, Stitchers. Hi. I'm Laura. I'm Keisha. I'm Fawn. And I'm Sean. <laughs> and we are the Pattern Queens, and welcome to Special Stitch With Us, episode 27. And we have guests today. Woohoo! Woohoo! Hello. We're so excited. Very excited. <laughs> Today is Sunday, August the 28th, and this is a channel about cross stitch. And rambling, and shenanigans, and silliness, and getting to stitch with Sanctum Stitching. Ooh, new friendships. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I already know you so well. <laughs> <laughs> well, after um, scrolling through your Instagrams for a little bit, I feel like I know you too. <laughs> <laughs> So welcome, welcome. If you're new here, welcome. If you're old here, double welcome. Thank you for dealing with us. <laughs> so today we are all working on uh, patterns from cross wings. And Laura, I'll kind of let you say how that all started, but let's go around and show what we're all working on. I'm working on Yellow Warbler Biscore Nest, and this Ooh. is a new start for me. And I'm going to start with the scissor fob. And I'm just working on a piece of 28 count white linen because it's pretty much full coverage. And did you say it's over one? So um, where I'm going to be working at, I'm going to put in the border. The border part of the scissor fob is over two, but then the whole bird is over one. And the background too. Cool. Should be exciting. I am working on Glory in the Morning. This is one of my long term whips, and I have not made it really far, but this is what I have started so far. I'm going to do some back stitch today. This piece of fabric, my family bought me the fabric that goes with it. So it's blue at the top and green at the bottom, and it's like eight miles long. Yeah, that's a huge one. <laughs> So that's me. And I'm working on Loon Lake. It's number 17 by Crosswing. And this will be a present for my dad. So I'm just gonna start right here in the white because that's the middle. And then this little tiny guy I had stitched last year at Christmas. So it's fun to be on the second part of this chart and then I'll be done with it. <laughs> and I'm gonna stitch on 28 count Be Stitch Me. This is a fabric Ooh. of the month called Rainy Day. That's gorgeous. And what I have today uh, from Crosswing Collection is a Crosswing Christmas. So they've got the design there. And what I'll be working on up here in this corner is the Blue Jay. It's got some snow and it's sitting on some branches. He's so chunky. And he's so chunky. <laughs> oh, so, he's so cute. Oh, I'm just stitching on a piece of uh, Ada, actually. Uh, 14 count Ada, Whispering Blue. or Whispering Blue, something, something like it that. It was in our stash. <laughs> it's in our stash, but it's got some nice blues in there for like winter and stuff. So Yeah, that's, that's always good. Keisha is an equal opportunity stitcher for fabric. I'm kind of a fabric snob because I just don't like the feel of other things. Although, since I've started stitching in a hoop again, I found that it doesn't bother me so much. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I'm and like, really, does it have holes on it? I'll stitch on it. Yeah. Really, I kind of only discriminate against even weaves. There's something about the texture that just bugs me. They're really soft, right? Well, they feel like... I don't know that they just feel weird to me and I split the threads a lot but hmm. they're beautiful and I don't have any problem with somebody else working on them just don't make me <laughs> <laughs> I um, like to weave a lot so <laughs> this kind of came about because Fawn stitches she loves crossed wing love it <laughs> yes and um I knew that I had this in my stash and that it would come up sometime during the year. And I kept asking Fawn, do you have this one? And it's probably the one crossed wing that she doesn't have. Come I on. know, I've been really trying to collect them. Yeah. So it's really fun because I, I probably ask her a half dozen times, do you have this one? And she's always very patient with me and says, no, Laura, that's one I don't have. Not yet. I want it. I don't have it. <laughs> So then I heard her say that she wanted to stitch the piece she's going to work on for her dad. 
And I thought, well, that could be fun. And Fawn and I talked and decided that a sow could be an awesome thing. And of course, all you have to do is say, hey, Keisha, want to stitch with me? And Keisha's <laughs> response is always, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> And then I know Fawn went back to Sean and asked him. And I'm always like, oh, you're going to include me. Yes, please. And <laughs> I'm so nervous. And then, of course, we're like, but what if we just filmed us starting all of these things? <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> and of course, the one Sean picks, he has one full stitch to start with in the middle, and the rest are all half stitches. So it was like, Okay, throwing you right into crosswing right from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking through this um this pattern and it's just a little intense. I don't know that there are many like full stitches. It's mostly over one for me and a lot of close-ups and then a lot of just information about the nests of yellow warblers because they're very oh, detailed. Cool. So I'm going to learn a lot about this bird that I didn't know I needed to know about. I sent Keisha off to look at Amy Loves Toads also because Amy has mm -hmm. done all of the Biscor nests. Yes. Well, so go look at she's Instagram. done several. Yes. And they are really cool. And I thought, oh, this will be like an interactive thing for my son. Oh, wow. Maybe he would like to see this all come together. And then I'm like, I don't know that I'm going to let him touch this after I finish it. This will go someplace and just look nice. No, the cross wings are so much work and there's the half stitches, the back, everything is back stitch. You know, it's like it's so intensive that you're like, no, don't, I'm going to hold it over here. <laughs> <laughs> Even as, as an adult, this. like don't come too close. <laughs> Please do not get fruit snacks on my nest. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <Sean>. <laughs> All right, so the first question I have for you guys, and we'll answer two. Um, how long have each of you been stitching for? We were talking about this last night, actually. I yeah. believe I started in 2018 with, I just kind of wanted something to keep my hands busy. I had just graduated from grad school and started my big kid job. And now I wasn't working all night every more anymore like I was in grad school so I just needed something besides my phone and I found this little wooden kit at Hobby Lobby and I didn't at the time I didn't know that you could separate your floss into one strand so I was stitching with all six thr oh. strands in this wood hoop mm -hmm. oh my gosh <laughs> and I didn't know that you should like keep your x's all going in the same direction so this thing mm -hmm. it's like this is all over the place half of it is with two strands half of it is with six strands x's are everywhere but I just even though it was so difficult for me because I was trying to stitch with six strands it was really nice not to be on my phone right. and then we ended up driving to Cleveland to go into a stitching shop and from there I was just hooked so since 2018 or so yeah. is the long answer to that question oh, <laughs> the short answer cool. yeah <laughs> And I want to say 2019, I started after her. She was in the NAGT meetings in our local area for a while. Uh, Needle Arts Guild of Toledo, which is part of EGA, the Embroiderers Guild of America. <laughs> right. And uh, I attended one of the meetings. She's like, oh, I want to tag along. I'm like, sure. She's like, you know, we could start you a project if you want. And I'm like, okay. And I remember it was those little $2 kits from Hobby Lobby or Michael's that we picked up. And it was like this smiling face emoji. No, no, you started oh. with the owl. Oh, that's right. It was bright and colorful, but it was overwhelming. <laughs> yes. I picked one, of course, me being a person who loves colors, picked the one with like 15 different colors. <laughs> and uh, this little tiny kit and there's this little like uh, little, I guess, psychedelic owl. And uh, I just remember being so difficult at first my my stitches were in a different way but we knew how to separate floss at that point but we so didn't that know worked. how to separate <laughs> floss but yeah so i guess i've been stitching for about two and a half three years now feel like that. doesn't feel like it though no well 
I have been stitching, um, well, for almost 20 years now. Uh, the way I got into it is my grandma retired. And one of the retirement gifts that she got was this, oh, I don't even know what store it was from, but it was this uh, like Chinese symbol for peace or something like that. Just this little cross stitch kit. And I was visiting her for the summer and I had kind of run out of all of the things there were to do at her house. And so she gave me that to work on. And so I tried it and it just stuck. And I didn't really know a whole lot about anything either. I'm sure I just like read the instructions in the kit. I couldn't even tell you where that piece is now. It's lost <laughs> to time, but, um, but that's kind of how I got into it. it was just by accident, just a kit that my grandma knew she was never going to stitch because no one in my immediate family are stitchers. I married into a family of stitchers, but mm -hmm. uh, oh nice. <laughs> yeah, my my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law both stitch. My husband does not. But uh, yeah, so I'm not even sure why they gave that to my grandmother. But that's how I got into it. Okay, well, I guess I'm the OG here, huh? So <laughs> I've been stitching. I was sitting here counting. I've been stitching for more than 40 years wow. cross stitch uh -huh. but I've been like I've done embroidery and candle wicking and whatever else since I was really 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 little and um cross stitch I got because I was a, a girl that I was working with had a creative circle party and creative circle was like a home party and it was all of these different crafts and I kept looking at the at the beautiful cross stitch things I just love them but that was not a thing I had done yet and I I they said oh you can do that you can do that and I bought the kits counted kits and took them home and started on this huge one and <laughs> of course you know it, it was not fun and I had started dating Jeff and his mom is an avid cross stitcher. And I ended up taking it over to her and I basically just threw it at her and said, here, you can have it. I don't want it anymore. I don't ever want to see it again. <laughs> and just a couple of weeks later, she had finished the whole thing and she had framed it for me and she gave it back to me. And she said, now, maybe you should start with something smaller. <laughs> <laughs> so I so started with that. that. Yeah. I started with this little kit that's like all in shades of blue and it's a window has a little bird sitting on the sill and it says when God closes a door he opens a window but the mm -hmm. funny thing about that and I, I have to tell you what it says because I stitched the border all the way around and when I, I evidently started at the top and went all the way around and when I got right back up to the top the last stitch I stitched like I messed up and I stitched off out to the side one so my window is open <laughs> and I've left it I mean how could you how could you change that afterwards you know so that's me okay the next question is what are your favorite types of things to stitch do you have a theme or obviously Sean likes colorful things so what sort of things do you like to stitch? What are you drawn to? I love birds. And so I definitely love the crosswing collections, obviously. Um, I also really like spooky stuff. So anything with a black cat or a haunted house, that sort of thing is really fun for me. Um, what would you say? What else? Anything that's also like not super mainstream. So that's just kind of who I am as a person. If it's really weird and a lot of people won't like it, I'll probably love it and want to work on it. <laughs> yeah, astute. She also likes to stitch anything Katie Landis tells her she must. Uh, that's well, true. I mean, that's I do just that. not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> How could you not listen to her? <laughs> because, Speak okay, fun fact about Fawn she has won frog warts two years in a row no way yeah <laughs> well i haven't ever won frog warts i did have a baby 
as the closing ceremony of the first year happened. Yes. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. So the closing no. ceremony for Frog Wars year one started at six o'clock on July 14th. My son was born at precisely six o'clock on July 14th. Oh, wow. So I started Frog Wars very pregnant and ended Frog Wars with a baby. <laughs> <laughs> And during the entire closing ceremonies, and you know how long they are, I'm sitting, checking my phone, thinking, I wonder if she's had this baby yet. I wonder if she's had this baby yet. <laughs> and we signed off after the whole big thing. And just a couple of minutes later, Keisha messaged me and said, he's here. So it was really <laughs> exciting. <Aww. laughs> well, I guess that's a good excuse to miss Frog Wars. So right, we'll right. allow it. <laughs> 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 Sean what do you like to stitch I know a little bit about this yeah so I mean I, I like to stitch I've been in the the I do like colorful I like a lot of different colorful patterns um ones that have a lot of like switching and like variegation and I I like I like the designs of like animals so my specifically animals standing on top of each other. <laughs> standing <laughs> and or stacked on top of each other. So I've got a lot of the Halloweenies or a lot of the, the weenies collection. The Plum Street. Plum Street. Like the little, I, yeah, I saw that you were stitching little polka dot the queenie, which is yeah. what I, I didn't have it started yet. <laughs> right. I have a few of the weenies in collection that have still yet to be stitched, but I do have them in my collection. And like, it's, like she said, uh, like, like pigs stacked on top of each other. I've got raccoons that I took to Stitch Con as my finished piece mm -hmm. that are stacked. They're like ones in a pumpkin and the other one's staying on its back. So I like a lot of like woodland forest stuff. And that's like what I'm like gearing towards more these days is like a lot of like forest scenes, um, nature. Um, what I would really like to do is find a really nice like uh, astronomy piece we have like a nebula or a galaxy something mm -hmm. with like that and one day i hope to stitch a full coverage galaxy so that's, Ooh. that's so I'm... heaven and earth designs has yes. some of the nasa photographs i don't know if you've seen that that they've no, really yeah wow. you'll have to go check that out because they there are some like um, really cool ones and you if said that's having a box Heaven and Earth. Huh? Heaven and Earth. Okay. Yeah. yeah Heaven and Earth design. So they're like massive full coverage ones if you're looking for that. But a lot of different, uh, yeah, the the NASA photographs from the satellites and stuff. They're pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I'll have to check it out. That's so cool. Yeah. And uh, just a couple other things is like, I like Clouds Factory. I think they have a lot of good designs. They have um, a stitch one with like a bunch of scientists. Uh, yeah. So like, so I'm into like the sciences, arts, you know, things like that. So anything that has like astronomy or like like a cool science design or something like that, I also like. And your squirrels. And my squirrels. squirrels. Yeah. Squirrels. So and like here's the thing, just like animals that like are like doing human activities. Like I have one that's a squirrel that's like riding a bike. And uh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, that's uh i can't remember hickety pickety yes i think it's called, i can't is that barbara Ann? Uh, is that needle? Needle, but yeah so i just like animals <laughs> i love how we give these long-winded things and we're like animals animals <laughs> <laughs> you know what the long-winded is fun though um, yeah. you know what it was really good too because i'm sitting here thinking what do i like to stitch and I mean, I don't know how much of my wall you can see, but it's eclectic. Like part of this is Katie, but okay. So there's a Quaker piece that I did because I love Blackbird designs, but I think I love them almost mm -hmm. as much because really they started kind of at my LNS. Um, mm -hmm. Like I saw their first designs before they went to market. Wow. And um and and I just I that's but see look this is a blackbird design also the big fish. Mm -hmm. Oh okay. Hmm. So very different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I do seem to stitch a lot of florals, 
Um, and I always say that I'm not a sampler stitcher, but what I really mean is I'm not a reproduction sampler stitcher mm -hmm. because I do stitch a lot of samplers and, um, oh man, I stitch, I, I like a lot of Christmas things for sure. I'm trying to be good about all that. I am not so much into Halloween stitching anymore. I can yeah. appreciate it. But like I've just slowed down on it. I think I have a lot and I've just kind of slowed down some. Um, Keisha, are you like dying to jump in and say what I like to stitch? Because you always know. I mean, rabbits, but I'm not cartoony that. rabbits. <laughs> right, not cartoony rabbits. They have to be like specific kinds of rabbits. And I like reindeer and I like stars. Those are like mm -hmm. my motif things, so. And you like patriotic stuff because That's July 3rd true. birthday. Yes. See, she knows me so well. <laughs> Most of the stitch with us, I could just talk to myself because I know Laura's answers to the question. <laughs> everyone, and every once in a while, she surprises me, but also every once in a while, um, poor Keisha will ask something that will just trigger something and I will cry for her. <laughs> and then she's sitting there feeling bad. Well. <laughs> She's like, well, I guess I did it today. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, my favorite things to stitch are things that make me laugh. Yeah. I just, I just love to stitch things that make me laugh. So that's why the little polka dot bikini makes me laugh a lot. So that's why that's <laughs> my, in my collection of things. Um, and I've found that I have a really eclectic uh, stash probably because if someone says would you like to stitch this with me I say yeah sure so then I end up stitching things like I had never stitched a scarlet house before and you bought me one of those I'd never stitched in ink circles before now I've done that I've never stitched a cross wing before and here I am stitching one so it's a lot of like, collection yeah I'd never stitched a cricket collection before so it's the Laura Landis influence probably <laughs> What but, happens uh, is that I end up with two things, two of the same chart in my stash. And I say, oh, hey, Keisha, would you like to stitch this with me? Sure. <laughs> yeah. and, and then I do. <laughs> but I do, I, um, I'll stitch some full, I like full coverage every once in a while. And um, I like things that are colorful. I like a lot of Emma Congdon's pieces. I really like stitching sayings and things like that um so I'm just it's kind of a if I see it and I like it I'll stitch it but also if you ask me to stitch something with you I will stitch it with you I think I get influenced by the people around me too because I really like Emma Congdon and Tiny Modernist now and those are definitely they were definitely more your wheelhouse than mine when we started right stitching. right so we've definitely influenced each other is what's happened here mm -hmm. or you know sometimes you go to an lns with your friends and one of them says oh i've been meaning to start that i'm thinking about starting something today and so you buy it too and then you finish it the same day which is what happened to me yesterday because we went to uh katie laura and i went to an lns together and katie was looking at something and i was like oh yeah i'll do that sure why not it was just a small thing, but it was fun. But that's they how I finished it. Right. And that's, that's how I had it yesterday. Yeah. Wow. It's it's like, it's really small. It Well, I stitched it over one, but it fit inside of this hoop. So oh, it wasn't okay. like a big thing. But it's not as impressive down as and did it. <laughs> we did we went have hours, day. yeah, mm -hmm. at the stitch together and... That was fun. Nice. So really, my favorite thing to stitch is whatever anybody else around me is stitching. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, answer to the question. That's why we're both doing Hawk Run Hollow. <laughs> we're bad influences on each other. Yeah, we're, we're doing the Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow together, and we decided yes. to do each square as separate pieces. Yeah. And we're both still on the first one, first square that we each picked. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah, those things are no joke. They're like, I mean, they're 92 by 92. 92. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so if you're familiar with the pattern, I'm doing the underwater mermaid one. So that is mm -hmm. almost entirely full coverage. Mm -hmm. And then you did the... Like the swamp. Yeah, the swamp. So the alligators and there's this whole yes. chunk of black sky. So we kind of picked oh. the ones that are more full coverage to start with, right. which was good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm doing a year at Hawk Run Hollow and Keisha is doing Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow. And mm -hmm. we both started and we both started like up at the top, right? Mm -hmm. So my piece has January and I mean, mine has the month on each block. And, you know, it, it had one little part that was kind of full. Well, Keisha starts and her block is almost entirely full. And almost every block on the Christmas pattern has a peacock. Mm -hmm. oh, it's pretty funny. But since you guys are stitching one, you'll know how silly of an idea this was. We used to, and still occasionally do, get together on Thursdays to stitch oh, at Panera. Yeah. And we thought, oh, we'll get a block done a month by stitching a few hours at Panera each week. And that's <laughs> the only place we were stitching on it, was Thursday night at Panera. So yeah. that's so it did. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> totally doable. <laughs> we're going to work on them. Hey, if you want to join us on this one, we're going to work on them in November. In November. I know that's so after Halloween. Yeah, so that's all right. I worked on mine during Frogwort, so it's fine. <laughs> But you're also starting another one, aren't you? Yeah, by um by Hawk Run Hollow, it's the uh, sea seascape one. Oh, I remember the shores of Hawk Run Hollow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, the shores of Hawk Run Hollow. We just found the fabric for it yesterday, so he's gonna get ready to start pretty soon. Yeah, oh, I, I can't wait to some... see what you chose. I know, so so excited. Uh, we saw it down there in Cincinnati at the shop there. And uh, I saw it hung up on the wall. I'm like, oh gosh, I have to do it. I and wouldn't have guessed that you would want to stitch that one. So when you were like, we're buying this, I was like, I'm not stitching it. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, uh -huh. I am. <laughs> um, so, that one is also in my stash because that's when I fell in love with. It's so it's really pretty. I just didn't expect him to pick that one. Yeah, I mean. The colors I probably do a switch out of like more like robust, like a lot of like like really dark blues and greens and stuff. Because like gr green is my favorite color, so I like a lot of different you know tones of green. But they they had a lot of different tones and shades of blue and stuff in there too. And I was like, yeah. And we went down to uh, Hatteras for our wedding anniversary one year, and I absolutely loved it. So it reminded me of Hatteras and all that and the shores of North Carolina. I'm like, I gotta get it. Oh, well, you didn't tell me any of that. That makes more sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. that was all romantic and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> now, you have to stitch it. now I have to stitch it. <laughs> okay, Sean, I have to ask at this juncture, do you have a specific green that's your favorite? Ooh. All right, so... I mean, so if you know what, like, if you know what malachite looks like, like the crystal mm -hmm. malachite, a lot of those deep greens, um, like a deep forest green, I guess. I don't okay. know what the actual. The, the, I would say a forest green. Yeah, forest green. Be yeah. Because I, Keisha. A... Oh, sorry. Oh. No, go ahead. Oh, Keisha, so my what favorite is your color favorite is... color? <laughs> so my favorite color is also green. Um, and as a person who, whenever I say my favorite color is green, gets all of the lime green things, like, no, it's Crayola crayon green, just, just green. I got okay. like other shades of green fine too, but just green is my favorite color. Just green. So if you've ever seen our shenanigator shirts, I believe that Keisha's is pretty close to crayon box green. Crayon box. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite color, Fawn? You know, I guess I should also admit that mine is green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought your favorite color was blue, not green. So I'm learning a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> it um, changes. But mine is more of like an olive-y. Um, I don't want to say just like a plain olive color, but a rich olive, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
that would be my favorite. You are outnumbered today, Laura Landis. Hey, but you know what? <laughs> Your greens all complement my purple. So, you know, mm -hmm. I am good with that. Green is my like one of my very favorite colors to stitch on. Um, it makes all my purples look fabulous. And I mean, it is, it's just one of my really true go-to colors for a standard in my cross stitch, green and, and blue. But I think because I like that, um, I like things to fit. So if I'm stitching flowers or something, I want it to look like outdoors. And so green or blue all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's funny. You're the only one stitching on green and we're all, I think we're all stitching on white or blue right now. Yeah. <laughs> what are your favorite um, like colors to stitch on? Do you do mostly neutrals? Do you like bright things? Um, not neutrals. I think I've only stitched on a neutral maybe three or four times. If I have the opportunity to switch it out, I definitely will for something colorful, but then within the colors. Um, so I usually like to stitch on either purple or blue. Purple is really fun, a fun color to stitch on, but blue I think looks like a more natural sky. Mm -hmm. And so I tend to pick things that are more natural sky type backgrounds, but also bright and bright skies. <laughs> What about you? Me? I mean, I do like to stitch. Like what I'm currently stitching on now is like the light blue, uh, like a sky blue kind of color. Just things that are going to show up really well. Like I tend to stitch pretty bold colors. Um, I like a lot of like your deeper, I guess, shades of um, like a red burgundy color and stuff. I have a couple of patterns that are on that kind of fabric. But um, like... I like, I really just like things that can show up easily. <laughs> I'm kind of bland. So I guess like light blue, some kind of dark blues, depending on what fabric. Let's see, I like, um, I like neutrals quite a bit, um, just depending on what the pattern is supposed to look like. So if it's something that's going to look a little older, I'll go more toward neutrals or if it's just one color sometimes I'll go neutrals but I also like some bright things it really depends on the piece for me I think I don't really stitch on a lot of real dark fabric though I usually keep it pretty pretty light generally unless there's like something specific where I'm like this is perfect <laughs> yeah I really like the look of dark fabric but it's just not enjoyable so you have I really, really want it to be dark to sort of suffer through it. <laughs> right, right. I know that feeling having stitched the uh, Frogwarts model this last year. But yeah, it was really dark. It was. And um, I think fabric got chosen yesterday for next year's piece. Oh my gosh, that was fast. And it's not, it's not going to be really dark. It'll be a nice piece. But I like to stitch on pretty much anything color-wise. Um, for me, it has to just, like, I just have to love the fabric. Mm -hmm. And probably, now, what's really funny is that lately, I feel like I have, um, I found myself enjoying more of some of the neutrals, but it's because I got those Emma Congdon books. And they look beautiful on just white fabric, which is yeah. so not a thing that I do. Um, I mean, typically, if I can make it an over fabric, I am, I'm going to. Um, I was pointing out my Blackbird earlier, this one, Quaker Garden, I turned mine to purple. And everything, you know, I changed colors in it to make the whole thing go with the purple fabric. So. It's, I'm an, I'm a definitely a change up the colors person so that you can have all the color. So do you all usually stick pretty close to how things are charted or do you kind of mix it up? 
Um, there's definitely always a change in there, but usually it's unintentional. <laughs> <laughs> so I always have one of those, at least one. Um, I, I think for the most part, I tend to stick to the colors and I change out the fabric, but I tend to stick to the colors that's charted and the mm-hmm. motifs that are charted. But every once in a while, I'll sort of brighten things up or make them really bold or really muted, whatever I, when I thought of that piece, how I would want to stitch that piece. But for the most part, it's the same. I feel like you guys are really good about stitching from your stash and that you don't necessarily have to go get the overdies. You'll find something in your stash that you think works for that color. It's something that I've noticed like not that I stalk you or anything, you know, but it's just something <laughs> I've noticed watching your floss tubes. I feel like you're really good at just saying, oh, I already have a red. I don't need to go buy another red. And this one will be beautiful. And it always is. Yeah, so. our closest store is about 45 minutes away. So we have to really, it's not that it's too far to go to, but if it's just to switch out a red, like you said, like we're not going to travel down there to do that because we're going to find a million more things to buy and that red will suddenly be very very expensive (laughs) Uh, but we use there is a website it's cody hoover i think that's how you say it Mm -hmm. it's the cody hoover dmc converter and so you just type in the dmc number that you're looking for and it'll show you all the different ones usually five five that match that dmc number and then you can just sort of look like oh that one's way too bright compared to what i want but this one is about the same color we'll we have do that. To get that link from you <laughs> yeah. yeah it's awesome we just stumbled upon it one day <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm forever looking up like okay well i don't have a bunch of classic color works but i have some general arts do i have something that kind of matches that I can put in there instead. But. Okay, and we established how long I've been stitching. So I have had the opportunity to do multiple uh, fiber of the month clubs. And um, it is really a challenge to get yourself to pull your stuff out and figure out what you can use from the clubs that you've joined. Mm-hmm. So, and I tried. Yeah. That's why I haven't joined a red color of the month club, but I have joined the fabric club because I feel like it's so much easier and personally cost effective to switch out fabrics, but to have to go through all of those floss colors and mentally think through, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to change? I, I'm not there. <laughs> yeah, I always, so I, I'm kind of with you. I am part of a fabric of the month, but not a, a thread of the month because I'm always worried that it's going to be an exclusive and I'll find some reason to use it. And then I won't have enough mm-hmm. or I'm, I'm just, I'm more confident in changing fabric colors than I am in floss colors. Definitely. Um, Katie and I have been kind of in love with the uh, classic color works flosses. So for Christmas, I gave her a floss of the month club, and that entails us going to the LNS and buying like five flosses, and I'm just buying them in order every yeah. month. So we're building that collection. But I also have the um, Silks for You Silk of the Month Club, and I'm getting their standard colors. So I get four colors every month, and my reasoning there is that I'm always wanting to. Um, for a, for a big piece, I'm always wanting to choose one of their silks. And, you know, if you say, oh, well, I want to do purple, they probably have 20 or 30 purples. Wow. And if you can't see them in hand, it's really hard to tell from your screen what you're going to like. So mm-hmm. my thought with it is that I'm building kind of a I'm building my own collection so that I can go back and look and see what color I would like to use and then order a bigger quantity of it. That's a good idea. So I'm not getting the unique ones. I'm getting the standards. Sean, we skipped over what you like to do. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty rigid 
right now still um you know my, my variation is like maybe if there is a like a red on the that they're calling for for the dnc maybe i'll switch it out to maybe a darker color or like a different kind of fabric but yeah i tend to switch fabrics more so than the actual dnc colors because mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm kind of by the book sometimes like the pictures like on some of the designs like the the pictures don't do the the colors justice so sometimes like the they appear a little bit more muted and yeah. then when you actually pick up the dmc i'm like oh this is a little bit more brighter than i thought so Maybe I can get away with just following, you know, what they call for, for DMC, but switch it to maybe like a more darker fabric just so a few colors can pop, you know. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, you know, I would say like I would have to love it in order to like the pattern. I would have to love it in order to like switch out a lot of color. But for the most part, I just I'm pretty I'm pretty rigid. I like to stick to, to what they call for. So he's also very gracious about accepting what gets kitted up for him so he has new projects to start <laughs> yeah so i am and learning and how to kit up my own stuff uh just like the measurements and the lengths and stuff like i'm like i like to stitch on ada you know i'm kind of the the ada person and i mean i've stitched on like you know 18 and like a couple 32 counts and stuff but um the, the fabric sizes and cutting everything still kind of like a little bit overwhelming for me, but I'm sure it's pretty simple. Once. So that's what's funny. Like I can cut linen, no problem. But when it comes to like cutting a two by four, I panic and think I'm going to mess it up. And so I think that's what's happening here. I think because you're so good with cutting construction materials and things like that. Yeah. But then you cut to cut linen or Ada, and then you panic. So, I do. Because <laughs> it's the same exact measurements, but yet, since the material's different, we're like, oh, no. <laughs> I want to make sure that I have enough margin. So if I want to, like, frame something, I don't I don't have a little bit, you know, to work with. I don't want to cut off too much, but yeah. Oh, no. I'm, I'm definitely uh, just keep a big piece of fabric, and then whenever I'm done, I can cut it down, because what mm -hmm. if I messed up? <laughs> I I will at least like I'll start in the corner and I know that I have enough on my two sides and I know it's going to be wide enough um but then I will stitch until I get to like three of the corners at least and then I will cut my fabric um yeah. but I'll also tell you color wise with floss we were at Cecilia samplers in Branson recently and I have been passing this one floss color and I'm like oh I just I I don't know what I'm going to do with it I just love this I just love it and I have made myself not buy it because you know why do you just buy the color if you're not going to use it <clears throat> and I was walking through the store and I saw a sampler and it was done in a similar color mm -hmm. and I I grab the pattern and I'm like this is it and I went back and got my floss <laughs> well, good. so I will have a start maybe I'll do it for sampler September because it is absolutely a sampler but nice. it's beautiful that's not that's typical so for me <laughs> cool Okay, I'm going to veer away from cross stitch questions and ask what is the best vacation you've ever taken? Oh, that's hard. Um, I would say when we went to Mexico the first time we were engaged, right? Yeah. So when we got engaged, we decided to go on a trip and not you had been to Mexico. Once but I hadn't gone to Mexico. And so we decided to stay at this like sort of luxury resort. And it was right after I graduated from grad school. So we paired the grad school PhD trip with the engagement trip so we could justify going to this resort. And we stayed at the a bureau star Grand Pariso. And it was one of those ones where everything is fully included. You don't have to worry about a thing. And that was just like so different for us. Yeah. Like not our normally we're camping in a tent, you know, fully rustic camping. So to be at this luxury resort, we're like, ooh, this is nice. <laughs> With your kids. 
it, mm -hmm. yeah we stayed at the adults only one purposely <laughs> yeah but yeah that was really nice. sure. but that was nice because it was just so different mm -hmm. what about you i would have to agree with her you know the grand for paraiso uh, down in cancun was gorgeous you know we got to see the tide pools and we got to experience a bunch of, of different culture down there and it was really nice and honestly like you know the Cape Hatteras Bay you know North Carolina I've never been to the Outer Banks and Fawn had been there many times when she was younger and she said it was absolutely gorgeous and we went down there and she did not she did not disappoint it was gorgeous <laughs> you know we rented one of the down in the Outer Banks they have these big McMansions and I mean like McMansions built on the water and so we rented one of those with my parents. And so we got to have them come down and spend the time with us and also get to celebrate our anniversary. Right. Um, they're right on the water, which growing up, we always stayed in a hotel. We would, were never going to stay at one of those big beach houses. So to finally be able to get inside and then stay there after I had dreamed about it, every time I went as a kid, it was really, really cool. Yeah, it was. It was really cool. So I think we're going to try to go back next year. This year just didn't work out. Oh, fun. I think the best, the best vacation I've taken was a cruise that my husband and I took to Alaska. Just because yeah. it was beautiful. We went up in mountains and we saw uh, like a baby humpback whale. That was really cool. Oh and gosh. uh just the whole experience was great. And we like going on cruises. I mean, we've only been on two, but I like going on cruises because it's one of those you don't really have to worry about a whole lot of stuff. And they take you to a place, you get off, you do your thing, and then you leave. So that was probably the best vacation. But a close second was uh, the other cruise that we went on. We went down um, to parts of Mexico, but we also went to Belize. And in Belize, we did an excursion where we walked through some of the temperate forests there. And we got to see a lot of um, Mayan ruins and actually like climbed to the top of a Mayan temple, which was just really cool. Um, I That was a bucket list thing for me for sure. So those are probably my two favorite that ones. Amazing. Um, I think cruises are my very favorite vacations. And We've gone on several and almost every single one has been amazing. <laughs> because That sounds because, like a good story. <laughs> well, I was on a ship that had a fire in the engine room and our cruise ended up being like an extra three or four days. So oh my gosh. it was really interesting. But I had taken lots of stitching and, and reading, so I was in good shape. But <laughs> we also went on an Alaskan cruise. That's it's just amazing. And to look out your window on a on a an Alaskan cruise, almost every room has a balcony. And so you you really get to experience it. And um it's kind of amazing to wake up and look out your window and just see all of the cool things that are going on in Alaska. And we did a whale watching cruise. Also, um, we saw a pod of killer whales. So, and there were some babies. So, you know, I, I have videos of them jumping and I work as a para and it came up last year, something about whales. And I'm like, wait, and I pulled it out and I, I was able to airplay my videos for the kids. They were so excited. And it was like being right back on that boat when people would spot the whales moving and jumping because the kids oh, are wow. absolutely as excited as if they were right there. Yeah. So it's really cool to have had experiences like that and be able to share them with these kids who really probably don't get experiences like that so yeah I've always wanted to go on an Alaskan cruise or really just rent a cabin up there anything in Alaska so I'll have to find out from you like who you took and what you recommend because mm -hmm. I would love to do that for sure it's one I of those 
I want to go on another one whenever my son is a little bit older, mm -hmm. because there are a lot of kids on the one that we were on and um, they would have someone shouting out the wildlife that you'd see off the side of the boat. And then, and the kids would just get so excited about it. And so I told my husband, so at the time we didn't, we didn't have my, our son yet. And um, I was like, we just really need to come back in like 10 years, whenever we have children and just let them experience this because it was so cool. It's a beautiful, beautiful area to be able to go and experience. But we also did a family cruise when my kids were much younger and we um, went up the East Coast into Canada in the fall with all the colors changing. And oh, that was gorgeous. Yeah, so I actually grew up in New York, uh, right in the Hudson Valley area. And so now living in Ohio, we don't get, get the fall colors the same way I did growing up in New York. So I'd love to actually have us go visit my parents in the fall and not on Thanksgiving when there's no leaves left. <laughs> yeah. So we can see it again. And I don't think Sean's really seen the full fall colors of the East Coast either. You're going to have to tell mom and dad, hey, Thanksgiving is going to be in September, October this year. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. So do you guys have any questions for us? Um, I really tried to think of one and the only thing I could keep coming back to because so September's coming up really soon, which for me, the second is September 1st, it's autumn spooky season fall. So I was wondering sort of what is your favorite fall activity or activities? Oh gosh. So, um, I love going to the pumpkin patch. We have one near our house and we've taken James the past couple of years and I'm sure we'll take him again this year. Um, I like just walking outside with like some warm cider and just taking in all of that. And then uh, fall kind of signals hot drink season. And I love like cocoa and hot cider and hot tea and stuff like that. So I get excited for that. And uh, I do like doing a little bit of Halloween stitching. And my favorite thing to stitch this Halloween are skeletons. It's my favorite, oh. like spooky motif. So. I, I thought it would be your costume party. Oh, <laughs> so I'm doing the hands-on design costume party this year, but I've also the past couple of Me years. Too. Gotten... Yeah, Me I'm excited. Too. For it. <laughs> uh, I've also gotten the frosted pumpkin costume party. I don't know if you've seen that. It's little candy corn dressed in different costumes. So the one they released a oh couple years ago <laughs> has one dressed as a hot dog and one dressed as a dinosaur. And it's really, really funny. And I'm working on that piece. So. You'll have to send me a link to that because I'm really interested. <laughs> yeah, I'll send That's you one. Cute. It's pretty fun to watch. It's, yeah, they're fun. Uh, for me... September signals like sampler September um, and all of the fall stuff that goes with it. But um, we will pull out our fire pit and go sit outside and have fire time as a family. And I like that a lot. Um, my husband is not as ambulatory as he was. So we also take drives and go look at the, the colors and things. I love for Katie and I, to make a trip down to Branson to the cross stitch shop. But during the fall, you get to drive through and see all of the gorgeous colors. Southern Missouri is so pretty. And wow. it, I mean, it's <laughs> beautiful. And um, it's, it's just a lot of fun to go. And I do still do Athena's 13 stitches of Halloween because you know, that kind of focuses my stitching. I think that's probably why I kind of dropped off of stitching Halloween is that I had so many that I would get there and think, what do I work on? But <laughs> I've been able to kind of focus it. And I actually, Katie talked about, um, she needed to choose her projects for the 13 stitches of Halloween. And I'm like, oh, I hate when she does this early because then that means I have to go try and find mine. And then I thought, no, I am stitching in groups of whips all year. Mine have been set since before January. 
because I have my pieces for October already picked. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, mine would probably be new this year since, so last year we had found this really, really nice pumpkin farm, apple orchard, cider donut, all the things place just over the border in Michigan. And you lived here all your life and you didn't know it existed (laughs) and so it was really really fun for us to find that um but it was just like the nicest I've been to other pumpkin patches and apple orchards before but to have the combo and have it be such a nice experience at this one location Mm -hmm. I was so excited so I'm really looking forward to going back at least once this year yeah and they they have the hot cider and the pumpkin cider and that sort of thing but they also have They take the apple cider and they blend it into ice cream. And that was so good. (laughs) Even though I was really cold, I needed that cider and I needed the ice cream. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We used to have an orchard close to us that did all the things. And we would go like early in September and do the apples. And then, you know, okay, apple crisp is one of my favorite things. Ever. Yes. And lots of cinnamon. And um then we would go back because then they would have a pumpkin patch after that. And they have a little general store. And it's I mean it's decently close to us. It's closed now. Um, but it was decently close to us, so we could go three or four times and just had a great time going. Where do you guys go, Keisha? Do you go to the so, corn maze? Well, we went to Carolyn's last year. So speaking of pumpkin patches near your house that you didn't know about, I had heard about this pumpkin patch uh, advertised on the radio a bunch. And it said that it was in like a different town that's close to us. But I thought that it was a lot further away. And then it turns out that it's like 10 minutes from my house. Yeah. I'm like, why did we drive? 30 minutes to a different pumpkin patch when this pumpkin mm-hmm. patch is right next to our house. So we'll probably go back there again this year. They have a um, a big carousel in a barn and my boy is totally into carousels. So we'll have to take him to that again. Cute. Sounds fun. We have one close by that has a big corn maze that um, all of the kids at my school are just fascinated by, and they love to go and see if they can make their way through it. See, my worry is mine would just, my kid would just take off and that I would never find him. In the <laughs> <laughs> you have to like tie a balloon around him. So you just see the balloon at the top of the maze. <laughs> he would just run off with whatever family had food. And I would never find him. <laughs> couple more couple more (laughs) he started he'll um so he really likes gummy bears and we don't give him a whole lot we'll give him like a few and he'll look at you and he'll go couple more couple more (laughs) no but he's been doing the same thing with grapes now he'll eat like two bites of his dinner and he'll go grapes grapes couple grapes like where'd you get this from first of all (laughs) that's hilarious i guess it's kind of a i mean this is more more. so maybe he's just like you know i don't know but he that's how he asks for his food we're like okay well you have to wait until everyone else finishes dinner before you get your grapes (laughs) (laughs) and then he'll go be asking for worse things than grapes so that's a good thing (laughs) then he'll go pout and then he'll come back and he'll sit in his chair and he'll wait for the grapes then we'll give him grapes. Then he'll go back to eating his dinner. Like, okay, you just wanted to eat grapes, and now you want your, now you want your chicken. Okay, <laughs> whatever, buddy. <laughs> All these greens look alike, and trying to backstitch is like what? Just stitching my little my little box here. This. Well, I knew the scissor fob would be tiny, but it's going to be pretty tiny. Yeah, the hard part with the crosswing, especially when you do a big one, 
and an older chart, there's no, oh, our cat's coming to visit. Oh, <laughs> um, there's no numbers on the grid and there's also each, there's no overlap between the pages. Right. So you mm -hmm. always have, at least what I do is you have to tape them together. Oh. And so this is my tape together pattern. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Because it, it's like, two feet long by like eight inches high and so it's gonna be this <laughs> wow I would love for them to do um a pattern keeper version because my problem yeah. with this pattern and the reason it's not done I'm gonna show you my colored one this it won't be a big deal you can see where I've colored but can you tell that that's two pages so instead of doing their pages this way, where they could have gotten the entire width of the piece, mm -hmm. they split it down the middle. Yeah. And that was awful. So I ended up taking all of my pieces and taping them this uh, way. So I haven't taped, I mean, it would be huge if I did the other way, but they're all taped together so that I would have two pages together. Yeah, when I did the woodpecker chart for my parents, it's a tr big tree, a oh, cage of suet, and then two woodpeckers. And I had taped all those pages together. And it was literally like an old school map. I would hold it up and I would just totally disappear behind it. <laughs> <laughs> and then have to fold into my little section. But I mean their charts are gorgeous they're just since they're so old that's sort of I think how it was done back then because I think the chart I'm working on was from 1990. Wow. See the one that I'm working on is is one of their newer ones but it's uh since it's so many different pieces I just have like three different pieces of paper that show me how to do the nest because there's like here's one part of the nest here's another part and here are the over one eggs that go in the nest. So I'm like, I'm glad you numbered these pages because I'm going to just have to go through them page by page and figure it out. Okay. I don't know how many charts they have out currently, but mine is chart number 60. Mine is 72. I think it's one of the newer ones. I don't know. I'm on 17. Mine is 26. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, mine came out in 2020. I don't, I, it's too many pages for me to flip through and figure out where they <laughs> finally put a date in these, but right. you know, Hey, and I want to tell you, thank you for having your cat make a sighting because it's not a bad uh, <laughs> video without a cat and mine are like, not here. Yeah. This is Wally. <laughs> Wally in all his splendor. <laughs> so cute. He swears he loves us. He swears. He swears. He, just... he is purring. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. <laughs> comes and goes as he pleases. <laughs> he always tries to leave, but he never actually goes anywhere. He just kind of takes two steps to the right or whatever oh. and then looks at you and you're like, I thought you were leaving. I thought you were done with this. Yeah. <laughs> Is everybody getting close to a good stopping point? Yeah. I think so. I'm fine. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll show mine first. So I started on this little scissor fob here. I've been working on the border and I almost made it all the way around. Ooh. Wow, oh. look at you go. There's my yeah. big start. That's cute. Okay, you guys go. I'm just finishing up one little section here. So as a reminder, I was stitching on the loons and I started right here. And that's where I got to. So I almost have the start of the chest done, which kind of shows you just how small this is actually going to be. Because oh. it looks giant, but I think right. it's just long. Wow, good progress. Mine, let's see. You can't really see much. It's a lot of white on this one. But if okay. you can remember, it's this design here of cross wing, this white bird, blue jay. I and love I'm him. just getting, <laughs> working on getting some of the belly filled in. So, you know, I got a couple of stitches in right there. So. Nice. You got a good start, too. Half, yeah. Half stitches actually weren't too bad. There's only a couple in there. 
had to remind myself how to do them again. But <laughs> but I got a couple. So yeah. I am working on the back stitching in mine, and I made it around a couple of leaves. And I will have to stitch more after we finish here because I can't lose where I am. Right. But you can see the difference in backstitched leaves and non backstitched leaves. Oh, yeah. You got quite a bit done. So, I mean, it does make a difference. And it's, I mean, it's really subtle, but yeah yeah their patterns have a ton of backstitch but i remember on the woodpeckers it was night and day difference with the backstitch yeah, really it's awesome the other thing is you were talking about the mix of stitches and if i can pop this off really quickly i showed you what i have done so um all of the flowers up the center are over two however there are little bees and things along the way. Oh, that took my needle with it. Um, and they are over one. So there's my little bee. Oh, he's so cute. And the detail is just like, it's just so amazing with them. So. Yeah. It just, it's a cool mix that they do things like that. I think it adds to how the whole piece looks. So that's it though. All right. Well, Laura, do you think we've rambled enough for one day? We probably have. And we've gotten up to a few shenanigans. <laughs> well, I guess all that's left to say is bye guys. Thank you so much, Vaughn and Sean. Bye. 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 Have a good week.